Odds are by now you've seen the numerous viral clips of what appears to be a giant burning hole of fire sitting right in the middle of the ocean. It's almost as if the gateways to hell were officially opened and we finally had the answers as to where all these UFOs were coming from. And then it was revealed a pipeline had bursted, but some claimed that wasn't the case. And instead, it was actually a mud volcano situated in the depths of the earth, inevitably causing a fiery ball of lava in the middle of the ocean. And it turns out everyone was right. How crazy is that? Two separate parts of the world, the ocean catches fire. I'm not sure what to think of this, to be honest, guys, but today we're breaking it all down for you on LBQ as we ask, why is the ocean on fire? Smash that like button and let's get into it. So on 4th of July weekend, when Americans are either shooting off or admiring fireworks, it seems other parts of the world wanted to have some fun too. The odds of this happening are probably impossible, which is why I'm still in shock, but a gas leak from an underwater pipeline led to an explosion and thus a pit of fire in the ocean. This happened on July 2nd with the blaze igniting around 5.15 a.m. By the time some of us woke up and saw the viral videos, it had already been put out. After a good five hours and some fighting, they were able to put out the explosion and have also reported there was no spill. However, a lot of people have been a little skeptical of this claim. For obvious reasons. They said a gas leak led to the explosion in the first place, and then they said that there was no spill. So I mean, I don't know what to think of that. The company responsible, Pemex, has since issued a statement, and it turns out the pipeline was running from their flagship location, Kuma Lube Zap Oil Development, as per Reuters. The media company also had information on an incident report issued by Pemex, which read, I quote, the turbo machinery of Kuma Lube Zap's active production facilities were affected by an electrical storm and heavy rains. So they're blaming rain and electrical storms, but are still doing an investigation. Also, that incident report was not in their official statement. It was more like a source told you know, someone and then anonymously and kind of got leaked, so I'm just saying. Thankfully, there were no injuries reported, but as I'm sure you guys saw from the videos all over social media, it was a pretty scary scene. If you didn't see it, just look up Eye of Flame, you'll see it. It's being reported they use nitrogen to control the fire alongside the water, which they were hosing the fire with. I'm sure you guys have also seen the memes of the failed attempts, but again, thankfully they got everything under control and there were no injuries. It'll be interesting to see what Pemex's final investigation reveals if anything at all, but given that the main source that apparently caused the problem is the flagship store, or I guess oil company production, I guess, I don't know what to call it. Well, I don't know, pretty big deal. Now on the other side of the world, a massive explosion also rocked the Caspian Sea, which at first many people claimed was due to another bursted pipeline. However, the local energy company, Sokar, made it very clear they were all good, with spokesman Ibrahim Akhmadov saying, I quote, no incidences have happened at the offshore fields and industrial structures controlled by Sokar. Work continues normally. The incident did occur on July 4th, so it was a day after the Gulf of Mexico, Eye of Fire, as it was called online, but still two straight days of massive fires in the ocean is pretty scary. It's a pretty scary sign of something. And I guess technically this is the sea, not the ocean, but the point I'm making is like just, fire and big bodies of water it doesn't really make much sense you know what i'm saying it seems the cause of this explosion at least as per sokar was a mud volcano which is frequently known to be below the sea surface near azerbaijan it's believed there are actually hundreds of mud volcanoes down below and the caspian sea is home to many offshore oil projects aka underwater pipelines however it's important that we understand the difference between a mud volcano and a regular volcano such as the ones that explode and shoot lava if you're wearing earphones because i saw a comment complaining i'm about to yell Okay, three, two, one. Science, baby, let's go! So unlike regular volcanoes which erupt or explode and shoot lava all over, sometimes even fireballs, which are wild in a whole other conversation, a mud volcano doesn't have any lava at all. Although mud volcanoes are hardly understood, what we do know of them is quite interesting. They consist of mud, hot water, and gas. So how did the sea turn into a ball of fire? Well, for those of you who don't know, Azerbaijan is known as the land of fire. This is due to its natural resources of gas and oil. As per the Guardian, Marco Polo, the explorer, wrote about the fires in the 13th century, which were caused by burning gas. Now getting back to the mud volcanoes, while they push out the hot mud, water, and gas, as well as other natural resources, sometimes they combine and explode. That's the case here. Given that Asperjan is full of said resources, such as oil and natural gas, which when ignited, well, we all know, boom, I'm gonna yell again, science! It's unclear how the initial ignition occurred, say that fast three times, because I just messed it up. But scientists currently hypothesize it's rocks banging together, causing an initial spark. And now you guys know all about mud volcanoes and the difference between regular and mud volcanoes. And you also know why the ocean is on fire. 
And I've taken a Twitter, Mark Tingay, a professor who studies mud volcanoes at the University of Adelaide in Australia decided to weigh in. Although there was questioning as to whether Sokar was being honest with some thinking it was an oil pipeline which had exploded and they just didn't want to admit it, others didn't think that mud volcanoes were real and that's where Mark jumped in. So first, Azerbaijan is the home of mud volcanoes and hundreds of them. My Google Earth mud volcano map of Azerbaijan gives you an idea of just how ludicrously many mud volcanoes there are both onshore and offshore. Attached to the tweet was a photo indicating just how many mud volcanoes are located in the area. The thread was incredibly long, but he followed up with, I quote, and the mud volcanoes in Azerbaijan are some of the biggest and most violent in the world. There are on average several large mud volcano eruptions each year, and many of them can have big fires. Here is footage of Lokbatan erupting in 2012. Again, attached with some footage of a mud volcano exploding. Pretty wild stuff, actually. And now, prior to this whole thing being confirmed a mud volcano, Tinge tweeted out, I quote, So preliminary analysis is yes, it could be a mud volcano eruption. The limited info I have suggests maybe Makarov Bank, which erupted just like this before in November 1958. But the cause is still unsure. I will update this thread with more as info comes in. As he did stay true to his word, when the agency confirmed it was in fact a mud volcano that led to the eruption. With footage attached, he tweeted, I quote, Update confirmation! Morning footage of mud eruption on Dashley Island, also known as Ignati Stone Bank mud volcano. And if anyone knows mud volcanoes, it's this guy. Because I didn't even know they existed before any of this happened. And this guy is an officiato in mud volcanoes, so... Anything he says, good, good with me. Anyways, so that's why the ocean is on fire. Hopefully this isn't aliens because I mean, you know, they say it's volcanoes and pipelines today, but who knows what they say tomorrow? And I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not saying anything, but I'm just saying. You get what I'm saying? I'm just saying. All right, guys, for now, let's do some comment replies from the video. Why does the Pentagon only have distorted footage? Professor Grandpa said they have better footage, but that would reveal more than they are willing to admit right now. There is also a classified version of the statement they released last week. I heard there was a, a an annex where they had a classified some information and 100%, like 10, 20, 30 years, we'll find pure Full color, HD, you know, 4K, it'd be great. But for now, it's just, you know, that grainy black and white stuff, which is fine, better than nothing. Carlos Taylor said, let's keep it 100. It will be years before we know if aliens exist or not. I think it comes down to personal belief. Who knows if we'll ever actually have confirmation. I mean, I think we could be aliens for all we know. Chris Penny said, editing software is editing software. The government doesn't have higher tech editing platforms than Hollywood. I, 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 I think they have better everything, to be honest with you, and that's just how I feel. Not even in like in a bad way, they just, you know, they have access to literally everything they want. Dale A said, anytime a clear video does come out, people say it's too good to be real. That's actually a very valid point. Everyone's like, no, I saw a video the other day on Instagram uh, from like Russia, and people were like, no, that's not it, that's, it's too, it's edited, it's this, so that's a very good point. Bug said it has high quality footage, but they aren't releasing it yet. One, because of security reasons. Two, not to freak out people. They're going with the gradual process, which that, I, yeah, I think so, but again, who knows if and when they're ever gonna release this footage, who knows, you know, we don't know anything, that's all I'm gonna say. They know a lot more than they let on, and I think it's probably better that way, no? Who knows? Up for discussion, I guess. Alright guys, that's all for this one. I've been your boy Pepper, you guys have been watching Life's Biggest Question. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.